Indonesia, a vast and diverse country of 200 million people that covers an area greater than the whole of Europe. Of all its 17,000 islands, Sulawesi is the most magical. Isolated by deep ocean trenches, it is home to more unique species than any place on Earth. I absolutely love it here, actually. I don't want to go. But Sulawesi is under threat. When you're sitting in Europe in your armchair watching a natural history program and thinking I'd like to make a difference, there is a way you can make a real difference. Um, you can come out and run a project like this one uh, and actually help scientists because without the volunteers this whole project wouldn't run. Volunteers from around the world are working alongside leading scientists to help conserve the rainforest of Sulawesi. Diving on the pristine coral reefs surrounding the paradise island of Hoga. Uh, my air is just over 200. And they live with the Bajal Sea Gypsies of Sampella village. In this program, we hang out with the punk slugs of the coral reef. Discover the downside of living in paradise. Yeah, there was a lot of shock associated with her. She was terrified she was going to die. And check out the local moonshine with the Hoga lads. It's horrible, this. It is the pain shop on It's absolutely fun. In the heart of one of the world's remotest regions lies the Paradise Island of Hoga, home to Operation Wallacea's Marine Research Centre. Our volunteers, some having already endured two weeks in the jungle, some fresh from the UK, have travelled here to assist the operation in carrying out its environmental surveys. Out at sea, a group of Bajau sea gypsies gather in the morning's catch. Part of which will find its way onto the volunteers' plates at lunchtime. Up the coast, project leaders Johanna and Warren are just setting off to work. We have actually two courses that we can take. One is the inland path and the other is the beach path. Both very, very beautiful. As commuter routes go, it certainly beats the 7.15 to London Waterloo. Good morning. Good morning. I've been interested in, in marine biology since I was a kid. We've been married now for 16, 18 months, doing, hopefully, this is the start of continuing to do all of our field work together. Yeah. Johanna, Warren and some of the volunteers are about to spend their morning hanging out with some of the weirdest and most beautiful creatures in the sea. Together, Joanna, I'll, I'll stay with Chris. You can go down yeah. and start, you know, I'll keep an eye on you, but you can go start laying the transcripts. Okay. Helping out is 20-year-old Joe Horton from Wiltshire. Meet the Nudibranchs. Each looking like they've dressed up to go to a party, these sea slugs are the glam rockers of the deep. There are over 3,000 different varieties worldwide. Ranging in size from little bigger than a fingernail to sumo slug. In conservation groups, the World Wildlife Fund, they have the panda as their symbol, or they have the elephant as their symbol, animals around which people can really get excited. On the coral reef, it's the nudibranchs, the colorful little butterfly-like slugs floating around the reef, and there's just these terrific colors sitting there on a, on a sponge and people are really drawn to them. Every amateur diver I talk to are drawn to the nudibranchs. They're what's known as an indicator species. They're a bit like the old miner's canary. Their numbers and diversity have a direct bearing on the health of the reef as a whole. By helping to keep an eye on them, Joe is making a valuable contribution to marine conservation. Because I'm a bit of an eco-warrior and the sea covers most of the planet and nobody knows a lot about deep sea fish and ecosystems, it's not a well studied thing, I thought to come out here and make my contribution and get my dissertation out of it at the same time. I think one of the strongest reasons for active environmentalism is because of the situation we as humans might find ourselves in if we do do something like wipe out the coral reef first time I went down it was just 
colour everywhere, wasn't it? Big shoals of fish that are like 300 fish large. About one billion of the world's population, I believe, lives within 100 kilometres of a coast. And of that, about 80% rely primarily on fish for their main protein source. So you wipe out the coral reef, you might wipe out the food source for nearly one-sixth of the world population. Beyond that, sponges and actually nudibranchs themselves are often looked to as novel sources for anti-cancer drugs and antifungal drugs that have come out of sponges. That alone is another reason to leave what's intact until, until or perhaps because we don't know everything about it. I want to be famous. I want to be the new Jacques Cousteau. <laughs> that would be my ultimate goal. <laughs> But down at the beach, there's trouble in paradise. An army of extremely dangerous jellyfish has invaded the island. Don't stand too close. This Portuguese man of war has a vicious sting, as a French tourist recently found to her cost. She was uh, swimming just off the beach, and all of a sudden she felt this burning sensation. She just about managed to get to the shore, and she collapsed on the shore. And fortunately, two other people found her and brought her up to us. Mais ça démange terriblement. So that it's very, very painful, um, more painful than it was yesterday. Certainly, the welts hadn't come up anything like that yesterday. It was just red, and now you can quite clearly see the tentacle marks. And you told them how it was the shock and everything. Yeah, there was a lot of shock associated with it. She was terrified she was going to die. Right. The man responsible for dealing with Hoga's walking wounded is Brendan Heaver, the operations nurse. We're tremendously fortunate um, diving where we are because we are diving in an area that has uh, a huge diversity of marine organisms, the highest diversity of anywhere really on the planet. But included amongst those organisms, inevitably you are going to find uh, dangerous organisms. Here we have the banded sea crate, the blue winged octopus, various uh, venomous jellyfish, stonefish, and uh, these all have the potential to cause uh, injury to divers. We brief everybody thoroughly on arrival here about safety procedures, uh, about being in the water, making sure they're wearing boots. This will stink a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yes, Brendan. Sorry, mate. No pain and no gain. Uh, the most common way that people get wounds here are minor little things like the, sand, the straps of their sandals rubbing against their feet, their fin straps rubbing, mosquito bites that their people tend to scratch. In this sort of um, humid, hot climate where people are getting in and out of uh, warm seawater every day, these sorts of wounds do tend to uh, break down quite quickly. That one there is just a coral scratch. That was just a nick, like a cat scratch. It just broke open straight away. And if people don't uh, diligently look after their wounds when they acquire them, then um, yeah, they can go septic quite quickly. I think the most dangerous incident that we had all year uh, was nothing to do with wild animals or snakes or spiders or, or uh, diving incidents at all. It was a coconut falling off a tree on the island of Hoga. And it missed uh, one of the volunteers um, and it fell very near to him, but uh, fortunately you missed him. Uh, and that's the sort of incident that could be very, very serious indeed. You've seen the speed at which they fall and the weight on, on, on which they, they hit the ground, the speed at which they hit the ground. If that hits, hit somebody, that would be a very, very serious injury, if, if not a death. Down at the dive shed, the man responsible for diver safety is Dan Johnston. Dion, 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 Holger, Ganty. Due to the remoteness of our location, we have no immediate access to emergency services. Uh, there's not a matter of just getting on the phone and ringing 999. We don't have any access to a recompression chamber. So therefore, we have to be much stricter on the diving procedures, at, you know, the way people are diving on and around Toga. We have to be more conscientious, more aware of the way they're diving. Again, for their safety and also for the safety of the people they're diving with. Under a blazing sun, our trainee divers are swatting up on the subject of diver safety for this morning's exam. And then you've got um, paralysis, shock, shock, weakness, dizziness, numbness, tingling, difficulty breathing in varying degrees of joint and limb pain. Also unconsciousness and death can result. Also they could be more subtle, including a mild to moderate ache and lightheadedness. So basically anything from like the common cold to death you could <laughs> put down to the bend. We've been reading the chapters of the book and answering loads of questions on them. And we've got the exam in about half an hour, as I say, and basically that should be 
once we've done all the open water dives, which we've got two more to do now, we should be qualified as uh, Paddy open water divers, which should be quite good. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad to be uh, revising out here in these lovely conditions. And it, I can kind of handle this, I think. I'm okay. <laughs> But will Becky be okay with the exam? Mm. Any questions before the exam starts? Okay. It's a multiple choice made up of 50 questions. That one. Can we start now? Yeah, just start. For the next hour, they'll have to rack their brains over a range of technical teasers. Hand signals, equipment, safety measures, the most likely reason why a fish might take a chunk out of your leg, it's all there. They have to pass to be of any real assistance to the operation in carrying out vital marine research. The moment of truth has arrived. 96% quite pleased. It's a bit harder than I expect it to be actually, but I mean, I think we've all passed. Got one more dive now and then we qualified for open water. Yeah, I'm glad it's over really. <laughs> Coming up. It's crunch time for our trainee divers. We meet Agony Aunt Olga as she attempts to feed the 5,000 <laughs> and volunteer Becky checks out the little girl's room. You're squatting over the toilet, getting your legs nice and strong, aiming correctly and it's quite an experience. <laughs> The newly arrived volunteers are spending their first Saturday on the paradise island of Hoga. Down at the beach, tonight's dinner is coming ashore. To the volunteers, it's a shocking reminder that beef doesn't always come in plastic wrappers. It's also a welcome reminder that Saturday night is party night on Hoga and beef will make a welcome change to their staple diet of tuna and rice. In the kitchen, resident housekeeper and agony aunt Olga Mishka has now got her work cut out. Put some... She's got to conjure up 130 beef dinners for staff and volunteers by sundown. Let's hope it doesn't fail, otherwise I'll be drummed off the island, I think. <laughs> oh, I thought I might do beef in a tomato sauce with some garlic and onions. If I had olives and uh, something else, I might make it more Italian style, but at least it would taste differently. In addition to serving up the occasional tasty treat, Olga also provides homesick volunteers with a shoulder to cry on. It's just such a wonderful crowd here. And it doesn't matter how grown up and sophisticated they are, they're still half a world away from mum when they've got a problem. And I think it's very nice for them to have somebody to talk to. They know that they can always find me around the house. They know I always listen and try and help if I can. We've had one or two serious things happen, like people's parents getting very sick and they had to leave and fly home quickly and that sort of thing. And then it's always a comfort for them to be able to talk to somebody and be sure of an ear and a cuddle and I'm old enough to be able to cuddle the boys as well as the girls so that's all right. <laughs> Our trainee divers could be needing one of Olga's cuddles if they fail to complete the course. They're about to put all that training to the test and embark on their first free dive in open water. I'm excited because we'll be qualified after this for open water diving so it'll be good and um, we're going somewhere different today as well so it's more like a proper open water dive rather than being on the little platforms, the two platforms we've been working on. Under the watchful eye of the instructors is their first chance to have a good nose about and to marvel at what paradise has to offer. One of the things the expedition does is it takes these students out of their everyday lives and, and it exposes them to an area that is re reasonably unimpacted where you see what biodiversity means. 
a normal day in our Western world, how many species do we actually, are we actually aware of? Here we go out and dive on the coral reef and there's thousands of species living in a reasonably untouched, relatively unimpacted area. And it gives you a reason for hope. But back on the surface, a volunteer has returned sooner than expected. Rachel has suffered painful ear pressure and has been forced to quit the dive. Any hopes she had of passing the course today have been dashed. <laughs> it's heartbreaking to miss out on all the fun, but she's putting on a brave face. It's just one ear. This one. But anyway, nothing you can do about it, so you just try again on Monday. But yeah, so I'm a bit behind. But the rest of the group has had a good dive. Well done, guys, you did it. No. You're finished. <laughs> finished now. Certified overwater divers. <laughs> Feels good. Got a bit of freedom now, so we can uh, help out people over here with uh, no problems with all the diving side of it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting it actually back in the water uh, either next week or the week after and doing some research for them. They've made the grade. All the more reason to push the boat out at tonight's party. I think Saturday night on Hover is a pretty, pretty crazy night, so I'm looking forward to that. Lots of bin tan beers going around. is isn't good. Not a very good beer drinker, but we'll see how I cope. Um, it should be quite a fun night. For Becky, the big night begins with a trip to the Mandy. It might look like a garden shed, and yes, it does have its fair share of creepy crawlies, but a Mandy is in fact Indonesian for bathroom. Using Mandy is actually quite difficult to wash hair, especially long hair, because uh, the soup doesn't actually get all the soap out, and I find I probably have never had all the soap out of my hair once yet. The Mandy water is very cold, but it's quite refreshing after a hot day at the beach and stuff. Are you ever worried about creepy crawlies and things? As you can see, the Mandy's are quite a uh, little hot brown shackled and there's probably quite a few bugs around, but out here in Indonesia, I suppose, uh, you've got to expect that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I try not to look too much, then you don't, don't get too worried. <laughs> we have these Indonesian toilets, which are basically long drop, non-flushable toilets. It's basically <laughs> squatting over the toilet, getting your legs nice and strong, aiming correctly, and it's quite an experience. <laughs> we all had lots of jokes about it and I'm sure we're going to have many more laughs about it when we get back to England. <laughs> For Joe and friends, the evening's Mandy will just have to wait. They're on a mission to buy Johanna and Warren a thank you Hello. present. Oh, good. How are you? <laughs> oh, you know what? Johanna really, really, really likes clownfish. Uh, does she? Doesn't she? She's yeah. always playing with them in the internet. Clownfish? Something with a clownfish. So you can like, like sign her names on that. <laughs> really what? Bane. And Johanna's favourite fish is the clownfish, so we thought, get that, sign it from all of us. We've got some beads. And we've got a raw and a bin tang bowl. He's Australian, you must love beer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Down at the beach, tonight's sunset promises to be a real beauty. For Johanna and Warren, it's a time for quiet reflection. Coming out here, for me, has really served to recharge my batteries and my beliefs. Here's a beautiful area that supports a large population of humans who are taking what they need and in general very little else. And it's a sustainable, beautiful corner of the world that is still exists today and for all we can see, looks like it's going to be around for a lot longer. So coming out here has served to help me remember there is a lot of reason for hope. It's still a beautiful intact area, we're learning a lot from it and it's very clear how what we learn here can apply to many other places in the world. It's the moment of truth for Olga's Indonesian beef in a Mediterranean sauce. The volunteers can hardly wait to get stuck into those beefy chunks. 
The weekend definitely starts here. <laughs> Beef there, mate. Got some beef. Heard about the cow being brought on earlier, didn't see it, but got beef, got potato, got a random fruit which I'm sure I'll find out. Oh. Why not? Looking forward to this. Really, I've actually haven't eaten for months. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Oh, cool, yeah. Does it Thank smell? You very much for oh, it smells sandal woody. Yeah. This is great. This is my favourite. <laughs> I'm quite a little mist on the back. Yeah. It's quite sad actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I wish it. <laughs> it's a little something to say cheers. We all miss you. All the best for the future. Keep wobbling and keep in touch. From the palms. Uncle Joe and Andy. That's really sweet. This is our. It's got kind of that petulant hue to it. <laughs> and it's got. If you take it into glass, I haven't got glass here because I'm too drunk and I've probably got But if you. If you smell it. You'll probably fall over, but it's not that bad. No, 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 no. I've got an actual mocha, black marrack, and a best bright. That's good. Right, well, it was. We were talking about it. It's good. Last night. Definitely. Hard week, so, yeah. We're all warning ourselves. Hard week. You've got a week to come, matey. You do all your work through the week, right? You do all this research and stuff, all the projects, and then you, it gets to Saturday night and everyone just totally chills out. It's wicked. Everyone just really relaxes and it's really good fun. You hit kind of the local delicacies, as it were, nudge, nudge, wink, and then you just go for it. It's great. It's really good fun. How'd you make your granny's toes curl? <laughs> On Hoga, it's a philosophy of work hard, play hard, with more than a little help from the local moonshine. Cheers, guys! I love to in the bar. Great. Join our merry band of volunteer conservationists again next time for another shot of Saving Paradise.